Hello and welcome back to the point and click devlog, an ongoing series in which today we're going to create life, by which I mean we're going to have a look at my process for making an NPC in my adventure game from scratch using Procreate and Adventure Creator. I thought it might be nice to show all the steps along the way for that because really what I found is that it isn't taking me all that long for each one and I kind of wanted to document that for myself so that I have no excuses as we move forwards. So anyway I know people use different software for art and development and therefore this might not be that relevant to everybody but it's going to be a fairly chill one either way so maybe get yourself a drink and stick this on in the background while you work on your own game. Okay so here's the room that we need another NPC for and we've got this desk in the middle here ready for him. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Procreate on my iPad and duplicate my character guide which is just a bunch of lines for positioning my assets. And behind that I'm going to add the background scenery to scale so that I can sketch my NPC at the right size within this template. So next I'm just going to do a very rough sketch first and because this is the operations department of my game's fictional company I'm going to draw him in a surgeon's outfit and make a joke out of that because that's the level of humour we're working with here, very lazy visual puns. So with the sketch done I'll go over the character with the technical inking pen in Procreate but crucially I'll keep any part of him that needs to move as a separate layer so one layer for the head, one for the torso, one for the upper arm, one for the lower left arm and so on. I'm using the same eyes from my main character for every other character to try and pretend that I have an art style but generally things are a bit all over the shop and my colouring and shading process is a bit slapdash too to be honest but the game's very cartoony anyway so I'm trying not to hold myself to too high a standard on any one thing or I'll go insane. So anyway those separate layers are done and can now be grouped and what grouping does is let's procreate treat every layer here as one frame when we come to animate them. So then I'll just duplicate that file, duplicate that group and just begin moving bits around until I'm happy with what's there. For each NPC I need to create four animations in Procreate. Idle, which is what they're doing when they're uninterrupted. Talk, which is self-explanatory. Transition, which is to move them from their idle state through to their talking state where they are looking at the player and what I'll call talk idle for now, which is where they're just looking at the player character while he's talking with the occasional blink. So I'll keep duplicating and moving bits and bobs until I'm happy enough, knowing that I can adjust the actual timings of things later in Unity. And this is what we're left with. I'll then flatten those layers and export them as separate PNGs. Okay, so now we're done with Procreate, and that didn't take too long to do. Uh, I think I went from nothing to those animations sorted in just a couple of hours, really. So then we jump into Unity and import all of those sprites, but first there's a little bit of housekeeping to do, which is to create separate folders for this character's sprites and animations within the project folder. Once the sprites are in, we're going to do some crunch compression and this is a process detailed in my Adventure Creator tutorial video. It takes a little while so crunch compression time in my house is also get another coffee time. Ok so now Unity has all our assets for this NPC in our project folder. I'm just going to drag his first idle sprite into the set geometry and then I can go into the menu and open the character creation wizard. So this is an NPC, we're going to show it the sprite we just added and then Winston will be set up as an NPC in the hierarchy. I should probably move him into the NPC folder but I am a lazy, lazy man. Okay, so just need to resize him now and make sure we do a couple of basic things in the inspector window including uncheck follow sorting map, else he'll be tiny and get rid of directional info because unfortunately for him he doesn't need to leave his desk. 
and now we can make him move. Job one here is to go into his animations project folder and create a new animation controller. Just don't ask me what an animation controller actually is. Anyway, then I'm going to drag that into his animator slot in the inspector. And then if we have him selected in the hierarchy, we can open the animations pane and start making animations. And really, this is just a job of dragging in his sprites, reordering a few of them and playing with the speed until it looks right. Again, you could spend hours on this, but I'm disinclined to. One thing to note is that I'm going to create two variants of his transition animation, one for when he goes from idle to talking and one in reverse. But obviously you only need to draw that process once and then for the reverse one you can just add the frames literally backwards into the animation pane. Okay so I'm going to give it a quick test and here it is. That's looking good enough to me so now it's time to see if we can get him talking. So we're going to create a talk to interaction as well as a marker to send our player to when that's triggered. And then in the interaction we've just created, we're going to treat it mostly like a normal action list, except for something specific at the beginning and end. So the first thing we want him to do is to play that transition animation. And the eagle eyed among you will spot that in recording this, I got my naming convention mixed up here. It's Winston transition, not Winston turn. But anyway, tick wait until finish and return to idle after. But if we just left it like that, he would turn to face the player and then immediately snap back to his normal idle state, which would be weird. So what we need to do is use a character animate function called set standard. And what set standard does is lets you tell Unity that until you say otherwise, his, in this case, idle animation is now going to be the one that we made where he's just sitting and blinking at the player. With that done, we can add some sparkling conversation just by adding normal dialogue blocks. And then we just invert that process at the end. So that's play the reverse transition and then use the set standard function again to return his idle animation to that original one. So there we go. And now I will just let them have a little chat. I need to change his label in the inspector from Winston Idol underscore one to just Winston, obviously, but that's pretty much it. An NPC in the game inside of probably three hours. So yeah, job done. Just a little hands-on workflow devlog for you this week. I hope that was useful or interesting for some of you. If not, luckily I hear that there are other videos on YouTube, so maybe check some of them out, I guess. Do a like if you want to like, do a subscribe if you want to subscribe, do a comment if you've got itchy keyboard fingers. We've also got a great Discord server for developers if you fancy joining that, I've put a link at the top of the description for you. If none of those float your boat, no worries, maybe I'll see you in the next one. Bye!